Alexa, play Saturday in the Park. Saturday in the Park by Chicago from Apple Music. Alexa, do you know what put a sock in it means? Put a sock in it is a verb usually defined as to stop talking, to be quiet, to shut one's mouth. Alexa, shut your mouth. <sighs> that song always makes me feel better. And it is Saturday, and I may not be in the park, and it may not be the 4th of July, but it's a good day. Even Alexa loves me. Wait, Alexa loves anybody. Anyway, hi. I hope you're doing well today and um, are ready for a day of loving people and serving God and pursuing him with a whole heart. Uh, I really am. I brought this morning something to show you. This is my stick. This is my little stick. And uh, this stick washed ashore onto the um, sandy beach in Michigan off of Lake Superior a few years ago. Uh, every, every fall, my wife and I make a pilgrimage to Lake Superior to a little town just to the west of Sault Ste. Marie. And uh, we borrow a house of some really special friends. And uh, we stay in that house for the better part of a week. It's right on the shore of Lake Superior. The view is stunning. The leaves are usually changing. It's cool, brisk temperatures. And I just love it there. And these dear friends uh, loan it to us for those days every year. So grateful for that. It's a place of rest and refreshment for us. And uh, we make it our, our Sabbath time, our retreat. Just uh, Debbie and God and little old me. And a few years ago, I went there <clears throat> and I wasn't feeling particularly close to God. He seemed to be really distant and he didn't seem to have checked in with me lately. Yeah, I know, it's my job to check in with him. But for some reason, we just weren't communicating very well. There was something in me that just wasn't working right, maybe. And and I walked down um, from the backyard down about 10 or 15 steps onto the beach that was there. I was all alone. Debbie was back in the house someplace. <clears throat> and when I got there, on that sandy beach was this stick. It's a pretty day. I remember just, you know, this, like I said, this briskness in the air and the beauty of that cobalt blue water. If you've not seen Lake Superior, uh, it's just a beautiful lake, a huge lake. It can be a furious lake if you're there in a storm. Um, but most of the time, it's just this beautiful, beautiful expanse of water. And this stick was sitting there and I picked it up and, and I'd gone down there to talk to God. And I decided I was going to use this stick and I was going to write God a message in the sand. I didn't feel like I mean, I know he was hearing me. He hears everything. And I knew he was hearing me. But I, I wasn't feeling like he was hearing me. It felt like every time I prayed, the, the prayer just kind of got caught up someplace, I don't know, in the, in the jet stream and blew away. And it wasn't getting to where God was. Now, that's just how it seemed to me. God was hearing. He understood. He got it. But I decided on this day that I needed to take an extra step to communicate with God. And knowing that he always sees, I took this, this stick and I wrote a letter to God in the sand. And I prayed over that letter, signed my name, and I left it there when I went back up to the house 
for God to read in the sand. And I went back later and made sure the lake had washed it away because I said some things to God that was just between God and I. And um, God read it and then he sent a wave and it took it away. But I brought this stick home with me because I always wanted to remember that moment of writing that letter to God in the sand. It, it was a special moment. It was one of those build an altar moments, one of those defining moments where you kind of like finally turn a corner in your life in a spiritual sense and um, things begin to change and God begins to work and move. So this is a special stick. It stays right up there on a shelf here in my office at home. <clears throat> kind of brutal now. So I try to take good care of it. But anyway, the point is, I wanted to encourage you today. Um, maybe you're in a place where God doesn't seem to be listening very well. Or maybe you don't feel like you're speaking very well and communicating very well. And, and you don't know why and you don't know what to do. We've all been there. And, and that time I told you about on the beach is not the only time in my life that I've experienced that. We all go through that sometimes. It's part of being human. It's part of being a lump of flesh and not yet being home where all communication is perfect and good. I'm convinced God was hearing me. I just wasn't hearing him. But if you're in that spot this morning, what do you do about that? How do you fix that? Because right now is an important time to be communicating well with the Creator, with all that is happening in our upside down world. Um, I don't know where you're watching this, but here in Illinois, we're still very locked down and it doesn't seem to show a lot of promise of letting up anytime soon. I can't help that. I can't fix that. Uh, but what I can do is talk to the one who's in charge. See, I don't have to make a phone call to the governor. I don't have to call the president. I don't have to make a speech to Congress. Let me tell you a secret. I go over their head. I do. I do. Because while I don't know the governor or the president or anybody on uh, in Congress, I'm on a first name basis. I'm on a first name basis with God, with the creator, with Jesus, my savior. We talk all the time. And you know what? Not only do we talk, he listens to me. He pays attention when I talk and he cares about my thoughts, my feelings, my opinions. Now, I don't always change his mind when I ask him to do something. But quite often I pray and he listens and he acts. And I'm so grateful for that. And, and I'm so grateful that even when he doesn't act, I know that he still heard me and I've learned to trust him. So when I don't see his hand acting, I can still relax knowing that he heard, he took my request into consideration and he decided he had a better way and I trust his better way. So what's this all mean to you? Well ask. That's what it means. It means ask. You got something going on that you're not comfortable with. You're frustrated. You're in pain. Are you, are you miserable? Are you, are you lonely? Are you going crazy because of your family being stuck there with you? Uh, are you dying to get out of the house? Are you worried? Are you still eating up with anxiety and fear? Well, ask. It's, it's right here. We have permission. In Matthew 7, 7, that's easy to remember. Matthew 7, 7, Jesus himself in his own words says to us, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. And the one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks, it will be opened. Understand something about praying. When you pray within the will of God, he answers and says yes. He might make you wait a little bit for the answer, but when you pray within his will, he answers and says yes. I've been praying that God would lift this scourge, lift this pandemic, take away this virus, this plague. 
And I think I'm praying in his will. I do. I think he's going to do that. But I think he's going to do it in his time. But I think he heard, and I think it's going to happen. Sometimes I ask, and he doesn't give it to me. That's because I didn't pray in his will. So I, I, I try to find out what his will is and then pray within that. Because it says, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it'll be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be open. Maybe you need your own stick. Maybe you need your own beach, your own little piece of sand, and maybe you don't have that. See, here's the thing. It wasn't the beach, it wasn't the stick, it wasn't the sand or the water or the pretty day that got God's attention. The thing that got God's attention was me. He sees that beach all the time. He sees me too. But, but, but what he paid attention to was his son coming to him with a request. And I believe that request touched his heart and he responded. So I want to give you an assignment today, a challenge if you're just dealing with stuff and feeling a little overwhelmed, maybe like me, you're just on edge. And you feel like sometimes you walk a little too closely to being angry. That's not a good place to be. And you just need to, you need that to go away. You need help with that. I want you to write a letter to God. Probably on a piece of paper with a pen or a pencil, or if you prefer on a tablet or a laptop, or even your phone, wherever you write best, wherever you get your most honest and creative, I want to ask you to sit down today and write God a letter. And, and tell him what you're feeling, what you're thinking, what's going on in your head and in your heart. That'll be your prayer for today. And if you ask, God will hear you. If you ask within his will, he'll say yes or soon. If you ask outside of his will, then he certainly feels free to say, no, it's not what we're going to do. So get used to asking in the will of God, wanting the things that God wants. I try to pray, Lord, would you do this for me? Is there any way within your will that this is okay? Is there any way that my request is within the scope of your will? If there is, would you do it? And if there's not, I understand, and I will bend my will to conform with yours. Why don't you do that today? Why don't you write it out to God? Dear Jesus, I love you. I don't understand you. And I'm not in a good place right now. I need your help. And then tell him how. And then finish that letter. Sign your name at the bottom and either save it someplace or or print it and delete the file or whatever you need to do, whatever works for you. But write that letter, guys, because it's just simply doing what the scripture tells us to do. Ask, knock, see if God doesn't show up. Lord, thank you for this new day. Thank you that you promised us that you're in it with us and that we can ask you for anything. We have your attention and you'll hear us, and you'll respond to us. Thank you for that. So help us to sit down and get it done. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, there you go. It's Saturday, but not for long. It's going to be Sunday soon. And when it does, we will meet you at 1045 in the morning on the Tower View YouTube page. Tower View is one word for our YouTube and uh, I hope you'll go there at 10.15 or you can catch it later. It'll, it'll stay up there. Do me a favor. When you get there, click subscribe on that. If we get just a few more subscribers, then we get our own actual YouTube channel. And we would love that. It would make it easier for everyone to find us. So if you don't mind, do that. But at least go worship with us tomorrow. Love you guys. Praying for you. And we'll uh, see you in the morning. And uh, we'll do this again on Monday.